Hi, my name is Chris Gator. I'm the Design Centre Manager for Micro Semiconductor in Livingston, Scotland. Today I'd like to introduce you to one of Micro's newest regulator technologies, which we're calling the Ripple Blocker. The Ripple Blocker is essentially a power filter that can be configured as a, a load switch with a current limit or a power filter so the output follows the input or it can be configured as a high performance LDO. The part is unique in that it offers fantastic power supply rejection up to 10 megahertz and it only requires a very low voltage drop. It also comes in a very small package, chip scale package 0.88 millimeter CSP and also in a thin MLF at 1.2 by 1.6. It only requires a very small ceramic output capacitor and a very small input capacitor, uh, 0201, one microfarad ceramic. Again, my name's Chris Gator. I'm the design centre manager for Microl Semiconductor in Livingston, Scotland, and I've been there since uh, 2000. Microl, as you know, has a long history producing switchers and linear regulators. Our switchers are typically used when uh, uh, system efficiency is important. And, the, and linear regulators when low noise or low cost is important. More and more our customers are asking uh, for us for ways to, to help them optimize their system performance, reduce board space and reduce cost. So in response, Micro would like today to introduce you to the, our, our newest regulator technology which we're calling the Ripple Blocker. So who needs a no noiseless supply? The obvious answer is everybody would like a noiseless supply. But today I'm talking sp more specifically about co coherent noise, the kind of noise that's generated from a switcher, typically in the 50 kilohertz to sort of 5 megahertz range. And that, that, that noise can mix to, to all other uh, places in your, in your system to a bad effect. The noise can appear on the, on the DC power supply or it can parasitically couple uh, uh, through a PCB. CMOS imaging sensors require low noise. Uh, on the, if there's noise on the, on the charge amplifier or on the ADC, it can affect the dynamic range of the system or the sensitivity, especially in low light conditions. Uh, transducer circuits all need low noise. The better the noise, the better the, the, the measurement. GPS uh, systems, they are notoriously sensitive to, to all sorts of noise. Noise will mix in weird and wonderful ways, and if it appears on the L1 or L2 carrier frequencies or gets modulated down into the IF band, it can dramatically affect system acquisition, system tracking performance. And then cellular and RF products all rely on very accurate timing references, and the clocks in these systems generally um, developed from a, a crystal oscillator and a phase lock loop. So, uh, and, in the phase lock loop, if noise appears uh, on the charge pump or on the VCO, that will manifest itself as timing jitter. And the worse the timing jitter, the worse the bit error rate. So in fact, many of our customers today are asking for uh, fixed frequency switchers or switchers with a forced sync function where they can lock our DC-DC to, to, to their own system clock to avoid any uh, uh, noise appearing on, on, on an unwanted frequency. So what does a ripple blocker do? A picture's worth a thousand words. So what we see here on the left is a, a Micrel uh, MIC23155 hyper light load switcher. And I was just really uh, using this for uh, demonstration purposes. It has five volts in and uh, three volts out. It's operating at 630 kilohertz in discontinuous mode. What we have on the right is the first member of our new Ripple Blocker family, which is the MIC94300. It's a Ripple Blocker um, configured as a voltage follower, so it's like a power filter. Up here on the, the plot on the left, you can see 25 millivolts peak-to-peak -peak ripple coming out of the DC-DC. It's not normally that high, but the, for the demo board, it's running in discontinuous mode, so the ripple is quite high in this particular configuration. You can see the uh, spectral content here. It's producing spurs you know, over a broad range of uh, frequencies. I think it's up to 5 megahertz here. On the right, you can see what the ripple blocker does. The ripple blocker, in essence, is a, is a power filter, but the technology can be easily configured through metal masks to act as a current-limited switch. 
It could act as a, a, a power filter, and it can also act as a high-performance LDO. The unique thing about it compared to other uh, products is that it has, offers excellent power supply rejection up to 10 megahertz, so you can clean up DC-DC ripple. Conventional LDOs uh, have trouble at these kind of frequencies when you get them to multi-megahertz cleaning up DC-DC ripple. That's really what the, the ripple blocker is targeted at. The other unique thing about it is it offers that power supply rejection with a very low very voltage drop. So that improves system efficiency and extends battery life. It does it in a very small package, a 0.88 millimeter CSP, and it only requires uh, one microfarad input and output caps. And the, the, the particular ones we're using in the demo board are 0201, so they're very small. It's integrated in standard uh, CMOS technology, so the, the technology is very portable, and we can apply it to new applications as they, they appear, and we're hoping that will open up some new markets. There are other ways to reduce this kind of ripple. You could use a DC-DC that was driven from a spread spectrum clock, but that tends to, it will reduce these spurs, but it does also tend to lift up the noise floor because it smears the, the energy from one band out to a wider band. The other way you can do it, obviously, is to use a passive, big passive uh, power LC filters, but they tend to be big and expensive. In fact, for the ultimate suppression, you could use a ripple blocker technology and then follow it with a very small LC, and that would give you the best of both worlds. Here we see a block diagram of the 94300. It's a four pin device, input, output, enable, and ground. The first member of the family is a follower, so it's like a power filter where the output just follows the input by a fixed voltage drop. That voltage drop is set by a reference, an onboard reference, which is VIN referred. So it just gives you a, a, a fixed drop, in this particular case, 170 millivolts down from supply. We follow it with a, a third order saline and key analog filter with a pass band of two kilohertz. The value of that um, reference is chosen to, to meet two things. We use an NMOS output stage, a power FET, uh, as a follower. So we have to keep that uh, device just into the active region, which is the optimum position for best power supply rejection for a given voltage drop. The other thing is we need additional headroom to, to take care of any ripple at the input. Because if you're, if you're operating that device just in the, tri at the triode region, any perturbation on the input is going to um, upset your power supply rejection. So you have to have a drop here big enough to keep this in the active region and also to accommodate the kind of ripple you need. So this particular device we've introduced has 170 millivolts and it's good for uh, blocking up to 50 um, millivolts of, of noise. We've chosen an NMOS output stage configured as a follower because of the natural suppression that gives us. This reference is set to hold that always just into the active region. And by doing that alone, we can get about 25 dBs of flat band suppression just from the, 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 the fact this is acting as a, as a source follower. That suppression continues up in frequency until the, you, you get an output um, filter here. So the, the capacitor sits on this uh, output here. And then the GM and then the C of that produces an you know, output filtering action. So your flat band suppression actually improves. And that will continue improving up until the parasitics ESL of the output capacitor starts to resonate with the capacitance. And then your PSR will start degrading again. I'd like to show you a, a demo board here today. Here we have, uh, on the left, we have a Micrel 23155 uh, hyperlight load switcher operating at 630 kilohertz. And it's operating in discontinuous mode. So it's producing uh, a waveform over, as you can see over here, 25 millivolts, peak-to-peak uh, -peak ripple, and a sawtooth. You can see what the ripple blocker does below it here. It's really uh, eliminating all that ripple. So essentially, the ripple blocker is intended to eliminate ripple produced by a DC-DC converter. The, perhaps the best way to look at it is to look at the spectral plot. Uh, of, the, of the before and after the ripple blocker. On the right here, we see a, a plot. Because it's operating at 630 kilohertz in discontinuous mode, the waveform is, is, is a sawtooth in nature. So it's producing energy content at all of the harmonics. 
We can see the fundamental here at 630 kilohertz, and uh, the, the marker up here is minus 20, so the, the fundamental here is about minus 24 dBm. If we then look at the output of the ripple blocker, you can see that it's done a, a good job of eliminating all of the ripple from the DC-DC. The noise floor here is down at um, minus nine, 90 to 95 uh, dBm, which means that the ripple blocker is suppressing noise in excess of 60 dBs from very low frequencies all the way up to um, 10 megahertz. I've now moved to the output of the high performance LDO. And again, you can see the ripple blocker has eliminated all of the DC-DC switching content. We're down here with, at, at, uh, at low frequencies, we're getting in excess of 80 dBs of rejection from the LDO. And at high frequencies between 40 kilohertz and four megahertz, we're getting in excess of 55 dBs rejection. The, the ripple blocker is unique in that it can offer this uh, kind of rejection with a very low uh, requirement for headroom. There are two, um, there's really th well, three chips of interest. This one here is the, is the um, DC-DC converter. And over here we have, the, we have two ripple blockers and the top we've got a ripple blocker which is configured as a voltage follower. That acts like a power filter. And below it, we have the other version of the ripple blocker family, which is a high performance LDO.